Hi, good afternoon everyone. Welcome for today's session. So, as promised, I said that I would be discussing the question paper of GS paper 1 2023 mains. I know it has roused a lot of curiosity and many of you have been like waiting to get into this discussion mode. So, good afternoon to all of you. Uh, did you get GS society courses? Did you take, oh, no, no, no. We'll talk about all the courses, Ritesh. Just raise that, like, you know, on the relative management, uh, like, uh, platform or, like, you know, the contact numbers which have been given related to management. We'll just focus on the course. We'll just focus on the content. That's it. Okay. We are just going to, like, reflect upon the possibility associated with what needs to qualify as the content part. All right. So, in this given sub-segment, we have this time, interesting fact is that this time we had a lot of questions. Like in, like I have been always saying this uh, for quite some time that uh, when you have understanding of society, you can be a better administrator, you can govern better. That's why we all can see that whether it is the component of essay or it is the sub-segment related to GS. Indian society plays a very vital role. We could see this happening this time in section B of essay, whereby there was a topic related to education and one related to gender issues, which all of you could witness. And in GS paper 1, this area was associated with 105 marks out of 250 marks. The moment I saw the paper, I declared it on the Telegram page to all of you that uh, just reflect upon this given scenario whereby we are getting like uh, out of 250 marks there is like 105 marks. Now I will be discussing this like these answers from two perspectives. One from sociological insight with students of sociology who are attending the session. What are the don'ts? Yes, more than the do's, what are the don'ts that you have to follow? And for the non-sociology background students who don't have to get scared when they are listening to the explanation that, oh my God, now it's sociology optional, which can help us like, you know, uh, pull through. No, I mean, sociology as an optional is great and it can really help you in big ways, like from uh, like reflecting upon the questions in the interview, having a purposive conversation with the like board when you have to discuss upon a lot of uh, issues pertaining to social significance, as well as essay and like, you know, the component related to Indian society, social justice, all of it. But still, if you have any other optional, whether it is political science, pub, bad, anthropology, like philosophy, uh, mathematics, uh, any uh, segment related to engineering, literature, all optionals are good. All optionals are fetching. In every optional, a student can score very well. So please don't get intimidated by seeing so many questions of Indian society. But at the same time, stop treating it like an underdog area. Stop treating it like uh, it's okay, I can just prepare it somehow. Some okay type notes will work. Some okay type of preparation will work. Every time I suggest that refer this book, this material, students, uh, I mean, like they have a laid back approach. Even if they complete NCRT, they have a sense of confidence. Oh, I completed NCRT as if it's a big deal. I mean, you're reading GC Leon for geography along with five NCRTs. You are reading like Bipan Chandra, you are reading four NCRTs for history and still you are not regretting. 2025 sessions you are dealing with it. So much of time and space a teacher is getting to explain herself or himself in these GS papers. But Indian society barely 10 sessions. That too half of you will be irregular about it. Then you will not do any reference reading. And then you will get stuck up with these questions which seem to be simplistic like at superficial level but when you engage with the concepts or the content it really creates a challenging possibility so i will be discussing the questions at the same time in between the questions i will take up your queries i'll try to handle both simultaneously as far as it is possible if i miss any of your questions uh, just trust the process. I will be taking it up later or any reflection which I find is important is shared by you. I will definitely take it up later. 
all right if i miss it because there are different uh, like uh, i would say places where i'm reflecting upon the questions so there are like live session students open there are students related to the batch sociology batch and everyone is chatting from different corners so i'll have to keep opening different gadgets so that's the only reason because of which i'm seeking your permission to respond to your answers maybe with little pauses now let's go like uh, with the questions so first one you can see it is do you think marriage as a sacrament is losing its value in modern india now pay attention to the question do you think it is an opinion based question as you can see it's asking for your opinion whether marriage as a sacrament is losing its value in modern india this question 150 words first and foremost it's opinion based second is marriage truly a sacrament second if it is a sacrament then how is it losing its value if not a sacrament then what is it and is it losing its value per se or it's some other form of change if we are talking about it and then with respect to modern india what can we reflect upon so here as you all can see as it is written that i have given the entire language for few questions few questions i have not given the language i have just left it that maybe like you know later i'll support the content per se for all of you i will post the answer for all of you those who are watching it like through open youtube channel i'll post the link where you can find the notes and everyone can read that material uh, with the rest of you you will find it in the form of like supplementary class notes now Uh, over here when we are starting with it first and foremost is it a sacrament like uh, like with respect to indian society or not so we all can first and foremost whenever you are starting such an answer the moment you say it a sacrament and you start talking about hinduism it won't be fair because india is a diverse country so it is preferable now see i will give you why this content which is written over here the logic behind this content so the moment you are getting uh, such a question which is before all of you first and foremost reflect upon the possibility of this given introduction that uh, like when we are talking about it as a sacrament we have to first reflect upon the diversity because the more diverse the religion okay the higher the possibility of we can say the idea of sacrament being discussed from different religious perspectives but can we delve in so much of detail when we are talking about 150 words no not really so we can bring this context within probably like a couple of sentences three to four sentences on a high side i have left it little stretched out because if i produce exactly 150 words maybe you cannot like create a similar content so it is advisable that like you know you read this content and make a slightly like you know just kind of content out of it okay so first and foremost when we are talking about india being diverse with respect to religious and cultural practices we can consider that it is not considered as a sacrament with respect to theological sense theological sense means from religious perspective whereby the religion itself is laying down its foundational principles its insights pertaining to marriage being a sacrament when we are talking about catholicism okay so we can see in catholicism it is treated as a sacrament in hinduism well uh, there are divided opinions associated with it on one hand like there are few thinkers who considered consider it as a sacrament because it creates a rites de passage rites de passage means after getting married a woman especially a woman who is belonging to upper caste born in an upper caste family after the marriage with an upper caste man or a man belonging to her own caste she is able to attain the status of a dvija like you understand that any one of you who has studied caste system there itself it is said that every child who is born is a born shudra but the upper caste children they undergo the upanayanam sanskaram or the thread ceremony or in north india it is called janeu so when they undergo the upanayanam sanskaram we all can see that through that sanskaram or through that thread ceremony the upper caste boys are able to attain the higher caste status with respect to women they have to undergo marriage as a rites de passage because of which they attain an upper caste status especially during the menstrual cycle 
they again reduce to the we can say status of an untouchable whereby they are segregated in their own household with respect to food or commensality or patterns of cooking and eating together okay so she is segregated these are some background information which is expected everyone should be knowing all right all this is not coming with so much of detail you cannot write in 150 words had it been 250 words then maybe you could have substantiated or if in future there is a component related to untouchability or something like that you can add more volume more dimension to it okay so here anyway when we are talking about it so in hindus we can see the marriage is treated as a samskara or a rites of passage rites d passage de rites d passage also you can write okay signifying transition from one stage of life to other and these rituals they are meant to invoke the blessings of deities and ancestors that's why you'll see ancestor worship and deity worship both taking place when marriage is going on okay and uh, that's done for seeking the guidance and support for a happy and prosperous life it is implicit now in other religious communities also we can see amongst muslims christians sikhs buddhists we can see they have their own beliefs and customs related to marriage and many of these customs like as i told you in catholicism there is this concept of sacrament but in um, like islam it is a contractual relationship right so when we are talking about it the all the we can say traditions and customs which are associated with it with the like we can say custom of marriage it is somewhere aligned aligned with the concept of we can say sacrament and it is like somewhere connected to somewhere close to the concept of sacrament even if it is not literally treated as a sacrament per se okay and that's why we can see there is a religious significance to the custom of marriage in majority of we can say uh, like religious communities across India there is a customary importance there is a traditional importance per se whether it is a sacrament or not treated as a sacrament or not now the question is do you think marriage as a sacrament so first you are contesting the idea of sacrament itself right whereby you are requesting the given possibility that uh, well we can debate whether it is a sacrament or not so first and foremost you are suggesting that even if it is not treated quote unquote as a sacrament a lot of rituals customs are definitely associated with the custom of marriage very briefly within two to three sentences i know i have given you little stretched up content but it is for your basic conceptual understanding now getting back to the game we can see it's written that additionally in secular or non-religious context marriage is a legal and social institution okay so this is like in general what we can see now the question is is it losing its value in like modern india so you can bring in the component of globalization you can bring in the component of liberalization you can bring in the component of privatization and the emergence of liberal modern values or we can say expansion of not emergence expansion of liberal modern values okay and with the expansion of liberal and modern values we all will be seeing that there will be somewhere a shift in the institution of marriage very briefly again you can enlist the nature of changes the and trends that have emerged related to marriage in india so and never ever forget the question keep memorizing the question whether it is associated with we can consider uh, the component of uh, like essay or it is associated with gs always remember the question see this remember just memorize this question do you think marriage as a sacrament is losing its uh, like a uh, value in modern india so first you are debating over the issue of sacrament then you are coming up with the insight that how marriage is still maintaining continuity continuity of traditional practices continuity of various types of customs and at the same time undergoing change okay so this component of continuity and change is what you end up discussing okay so what are the patterns of change which we all can see in the component of marriage so we all can see there is decline in marriage rates we can see people are choosing to get into partnership there are uh, we can say open relationships live-in relationships there can be a sense of uh, uh, consensual relationship without staying together so all those patterns will lead to decline in marriage rates another thing is changing in gender roles we can see that uh, 
like despite the marriage the gender roles are changing because of the notions of patriarchy getting challenged modernity uh, like uh, shaping our ideas perspectives pertaining to equality pertaining to liberty and all this will also lead to gender parity it will lead to we can say equality in terms of gender roles and relations we can also connect it with like let's say in marriage also equality is coming here in marriage equality what i imply to say we can talk about the lgbtq community like contesting for uh, like their marriage getting legal recognition across the world okay so we can see this marriage equality as a concept is also constantly emerging and negotiated marriageable age is getting pushed because of career because of higher education right there is decline in arranged marriages and because of decline in arranged marriage we all can further see that there is a constant possibility of we can consider uh, there is a constant possibility in terms of this decline in arranged marriage whereby we can see that the total number of we can consider uh, uh, marriages that used to take place in terms of parents uh, arranging the marriage nowadays those numbers are reducing though in urban areas also we can see uh, like uh, technology is also assisting like for example the various matrimonial websites the various counselors online offline we could see uh, the matchmaking uh, which was aired on netflix uh, whereby seema aunty was doing international level matchmaking right so on one hand we can see that uh, arranged marriage is still in vogue but it is means it has not completely faded away it has also caught up with the recent times but at the same time it is no more a sacramental relationship the boy and the girl or the we can say the male and the female they both are negotiating their own spaces their own choices they are trying to sometimes like you know expand the choices with respect to identity with respect to community uh, when i say community i imply to say caste religion nationality ethnicity they are like now negotiating with that they are open to that given possibility so uh, that will also like uh, challenge the dimension of arranged marriage again the redefining the purpose of marriage is happening when we speak of it whereby it is no more a rights deep passage or we can say a customary necessity it is more associated with seeking partnership seeking like we can say comforting relationship seeking love seeking uh, that sense of we can say belongingness so all that can also be like considered associated with this given idea of uh, like we can say redefining the purpose of marriage why we are going for marriage so it is no more associated with like a customary necessity a religious necessity that then only you will be gaining empowerment it is something now associated with uh, we can consider uh, bringing like uh, people together uh, creating ease of existence creating warmth in uh, personal domain all that can be considered higher divorce rates because we are as we are like because modern india modern society when we speak of it it will be guided by rationality it will be guided by logic and when rationality and logic will prevail you will see the sustainability of relationship in terms of your comfort if you are comfortable with the person you continue with the partnership when the comfort level is getting compromised you do not feel like sustaining or continuing with the individual hence you can call off the relationship so when it is a contractual relationship it is easy to call it off hence the idea of sacramental is somewhere getting negotiated as all of you can see again another component with respect to marriage which was very important the purpose of marriage earlier was associated with procreation okay or having children but nowadays marriages are not necessarily happening for the sake of procreation there are dink families double income no kids family and the double income no kids families are like hyphenating the given possibility that the another samskara that you have to give birth to a son and the son shall help you to attain salvation by performing the last rites that is also something which we all can see is continuously getting compromised i mean people are not going for necessarily having a son now when we are speaking of all this 
are we thinking of an urban understanding of marriage are we talking about the possibility of a cosmopolitan and a metropolitan understanding of marriage is marriage uh, like treated as a sacrament in rural india well if i like uh, because it's general studies answer not sociology but still if you refer to various studies you will see that separation and divorce is also like reaching rural india okay women in rural india are also becoming aware of their rights and becoming more assertive though the possibility of continuity of marriage or treating it with a sense of religious sanctity maintaining and continuation of tradition is still like more profound over there when we are discussing about this given sub segment again with respect to this term longer marriages may surprise few people what does vam imply by saying longer marriages longer is because of longevity of life so because people are like surviving for longer years thus marriages which are able to prove the test of time they are like able to survive for decades together so that's also another change in the trend because of medical intervention and other kind of health related interventions which is uh, bringing in longevity and with like i would say meaningful partnership people are able to survive their relationship for decades together so when we are speaking of it we can see that uh, like uh, globalization and with respect to customs traditions and with respect to the kind of impact it is generating for marriage we can see that globalization is also leading to various types of possibilities or changes per se you can first and foremost see that globalization will encourage marriage to be treated more with a sense of cultural exchange so when it will be treated as a cultural exchange and when you are open to diverse patterns of marriage there will be blending of cultures like let's say two different regions two different religious communities two different ethnic communities two different caste based groups when are getting married the possibility of uh, marriage like from a traditional perspective whereby endogamy or marrying within one's community was followed that is getting contested so new patterns of cultural practices will emerge because of it so that's why inter ethnic inter national marriages okay again we can see changing of gender roles whereby like people are contesting a lot of we can say customs and traditions pertaining to marriage for example in uh, bengal a girl she like contested the practice of kanya daan she said i am not a thing to be donated so i don't want to undergo the practice of kanya daan similarly in tamil nadu uh, like a couple especially the girl she protested against a custom whereby there was a symbolic uh, like gesture being made whereby the groom had to leave the house it was symbolic that he is going abroad to avail education and employment and then he'll be back and getting the bride and in between he has to take a vow that he won't leave the bride okay but the truth is that uh, when this custom was about to be started the bride uh, like the bride she protested she was like uh, even i went abroad i also attained education so if vows are being exchanged it should be taken by both why only the groom okay so we can see that somewhere the possibility of we can say cultural practices the possibility of customs the possibility of various types of uh, we can say detailed uh, dimensions of ethnicities is also getting contested by the like uh, we can say modern generation we can see again marriage is facilitated with we can say technological and long distance relationship so technology is also assisting these marriages especially people who have uh, like higher career uh, like we can say aspirations they are constantly seeking that how we can go ahead with the possibility of marriage whereby it is like um, taking care of the given dimension of what we are experiencing in our day to day lives right again further we can see economic factors when we are talking about it when economy will come into existence 
religion will not be the priority customs will not be a priority so we can see sometimes people match their class their economic status there are reasons pertaining to uh, consumption okay uh, whereby as it is mentioned over here the consumer culture the materialistic culture it also brings people together so marriage as a sacrament being chosen or being practiced is somewhere like waning it is fading to exist again so there are legal and regulatory changes also laws are getting amended uh, communication and relationship building we can see that's also undergoing change whereby we can see that uh, cross cultural relationships are uh, like uh, getting uh, established and then the traditional marriage ceremonies um, uh, with respect to this sometimes in my uh, sessions i say so sometimes in gs sometimes as optional that how many of you especially the younger generation can sing the songs which your grandmothers or maybe mothers or maybe uh, like old aunts must be singing during the marriage ceremony is marriage going to be reduced to bollywood numbers or hindi cinema numbers or the regional cinema numbers after a couple of years as the older generation fades to exist where are the traditional songs so when we talk about marriage as a like you know traditional ceremony bit by bit the traditional ceremonies are fading off the practices are fading off the like pattern of remembering those traditions the systematic order of those traditions which evolved over the centuries because of our agrarian culture because of our we can say interaction between different communities that's also undergoing various types of changes when we are talking about it okay so with respect to this when we are talking about the given dimension we can further move ahead and we can reflect upon the conclusive aspect associated with it that globalization is definitely a like complex and multifaceted possibility which is bringing cultures together regions together there are various types of changes positive negative okay and new types of challenges and uncertainties and definitely it is going to impact the uh, institution of marriage or as well as i discussed about the changes in the institution of marriage as well as notion associated with marriage so when we are talking about it being sacramental it was a notion which was associated with christianity catholicism uh, other religions also like hinduism or we can say sikhism buddhism islam uh, they had a lot of religious ritualistic customs and traditions in hinduism it is considered as a rites de passage traditionally but now all these like we can say aspects are somewhere undergoing a change the notional change with respect to the younger generation how it is treating marriage as an institution across regions so you can just like conclude it by saying that uh, the possibility of uncertainty is in the realms of marriage and relationship is happening because of the changing or the challenging notions of sacrament infallibility or purity that marriage is infallible it can never be diluted or it is uh, like pure larger than life institution no we are seeing that all those dimensions are getting like changed and at the same time modern values like rational productive humane engagement with one's partner is something which is more and more becoming relevant for the younger generation okay so that's how you try to bring in the balance associated with this given question all right then comes the second question explain why suicide among young women is increasing in indian society first let us decode the question because until as you don't like you know make a structure or an approach of an answer you cannot really attempt the details of the question so all of you can see first is explain so it's not critically analyze whether the statement is correct or not no the statement is already as the question is written that the statement is believable you don't have to contest the validity of the statement you just have to elaborate substantiate explain okay and then the component why why suicide amongst young women is increasing okay now a lot of students who were sociology optional students they said ma'am can we bring in durkheim and the concept of integration and uh, when we are talking about uh, the very possibility of durkheim uh, can we quote him well no not really when i'm talking about social integration and social regulation of durkheim please refrain from taking the name 
if you are bringing in this as an introduction that suicide is a psychological private issue as well as a social byproduct of a society which is experiencing rigors or challenges associated with uh, social integration and regulation it will be acceptable do not take durkheim's name you can pick some technical words and generalize it and that's how you have to attempt general studies paper this is for sociology students so that your sociological wisdom is also put to action without sounding to expert because if you sound expert in sociology i mean social issues think about the expertise if geography optional a student brings in geography gs or economics optional student brings that expertise in economic answer economics answers related to gs i mean that's unwarranted okay so you don't have to quote durkheim but yes you can if you want to talk about social regulation social integration they are they can be used as regular words profound words and anyway these terms are there in ncrt okay standard 11th so you can bring in that wisdom with a mellow temperament without taking the name of the thinker so that the general of general studies is remain in intact all right so uh, with respect to this when we are reflecting upon this given answer so first and foremost when we are talking about suicide amongst women so i'll directly address the issue of women young women okay and we can see that it will be something which is not uh, we can say perennial a problem it is not uniform a problem you can see that it is it can be associated with like we can consider particular regions or particular social social situations uh, we can say backgrounds in which the perceptibility or the possibility of a person performing suicide can be higher all right so here we can see that they face significant challenges including gender based violence discrimination which can contribute to higher rates of suicide among women now what are the reasons i have enlisted them like as you can see arranged marriages when we are talking about this problem of arranged marriage now arranged marriage per se is not a problem you can choose your partner through any means by your own choice your parents choosing uh, one for you that's perfectly fine the issue is the pressure the psychological pressure the expectations okay there can be emotional distress associated with it when you are like getting into i'm so sorry it's because of um just a second akhilesh ji why is this is it fine now yeah okay now so when we are talking about this given possibility of like let's say uh, arranged marriages we all need to understand that arranged marriage is not a problem per se the problem is our notion associated with the institution of marriage so if i'm talking about uh, like let's say a lot of pressure on the partner with respect to look in a specific way dress up in a specific way uh, like you know present herself in a specific way and the girl is unable to take in the pressure of adjustment and adaptation and conforming to the rules regulations expectations from her beyond the limit there can be a possibility that uh, like as you might be remembering fatalistic suicide right yeah? all of you types of suicide Uh, sociology students so in fatalistic suicide you can think of this given possibility that uh, a person may feel that there is no way out and i'm not finding any alternative out of this situation and probably this is what my destiny is all about and if my destiny is all about this and i'm unable to cope up with the stress few women may especially younger women because there can be lack of socialization hand holding counseling that comfort space because of which they may attempt suicide when we speak of it again when we are uh, discussing about this uh, given sub segment we can further reflect upon the dimension of domestic violence a lot of uh, like girls may suffer from domestic violence because of which there can be a sense of hopelessness and despair which can lead to the problem dowry related issues we can reflect upon it related to we can say dowry demands harassment okay it can be causing emotional trauma for younger girls especially when they are seeing that their uh, parents are suffering because of that so few girls may think of the given possibility of 
like let's say uh, committing suicide uh, that uh, like you know neither i will be alive nor my parents will suffer because of that reason so that can be a reason uh, related to it we, we can see gender discrimination of any form which is too severe in nature which leads to feeling of powerlessness and depression so that also can be incorporated so i hope sociology students can see that how types of suicide can also be brought in over here without necessarily taking durkheim's name once in a while borrowing a point or two from there and at the same time reflecting about the generalized reasons remember violence against women sociology paper 2 so violence against women you can extract points from there that's what i did extracting points from there and then blending it with reasons of suicide that's how you need to exercise smartness okay so bring in reasons of violence types of violence and how which reason can lead to a suicide that's how okay social isolation so a lot of women can experience this because of strict cultural practices don't meet this don't do this so that can lead to loneliness depression and in severe cases it can also lead to the the step which which is not appreciated or which is not to be supported in any case such people lead a need a lot of like you know counseling hand holding and formal counseling in many cases again we can see there can be economic vulnerability and economic vulnerability is also which is trapping a person in a given situation where the person is unable to meet the basic needs and necessities of life dignity of life able to uphold one's self respect an identity so that can be discussed a uh, media influence is not a massive reason but yes it has been observed across the world that whenever a celebrity or we can say any popular trend is going on it can also influence the youngsters so if any celebrity dies like for example one of my students was sharing that ma'am when sushant singh rajput died one of my classmates she was an ardent fan she died well similarly when j like we can see when jayalalita she died at that time also a lot of her followers committed suicide okay so when we talk about media influence here what i imply to say is like if someone is heavily influenced by some uh, figure and young people younger generation men and women both they are spending quality time on internet and this illusionary world is shaping their idea of real world and if there is any massive disturbance in their illusionary world where their world view gets like undergoes some kind of turbulence whereby there is normlessness what is right what is wrong that is compromised the person may commit suicide that's something which all of you can connect with again we can consider this um, um, for social isolation heavy regulation and integration uh, yes you can think of like heavy regulation and integration leading to social isolation that that's how you can uh, through cultural practices leading to isolation like that is how you can use it shrisht okay now with respect to this given sub segment we can further talk about uh, like access to legal means see i have kept it as one of the lower points like you know to not just the last point because last point also should be significant enough but somewhere towards the lower side why because in rural areas if you see the trend of committing suicide women have access to rat poison and various other local uh, we can say interventions which can be consumed and which can cause death so it was observed that because of access to pesticides or uh, rat poison um, it also encouraged or even access to kerosene that a person could just spread on oneself and then person could douse into fire so uh, that was also found that that was also leading to suicide like we can say potential aids or we can say tools which are around you and you are already undergoing the mental distress so lack of mental health services whereby trained professionals especially in rural areas when it, that is not reaching out mental health stigma people are not comfortable or i would say they don't have the maturity to accept that people may suffer from mental health it is important for us to respect this given possibility that someone may be suffering from mental health and you need to just respect the person to let the person be rather than judge the person or question the person but yes at the same time never ever encourage the person to talk 
or to think in that direction because when you encourage the person to talk and think in that direction that can also like you know feed the fire okay so here and you should not try to become a counselor if you are not a trained one okay regular counseling regular love regular uh, engagement is fine but there is something much more that is required that comes from trained help it comes through medicines it can come through meaningful counseling it can come through altering one's pattern of thought and behavior all of it okay so uh, mental health stigma is a massive issue in india and we have like negative social attitude towards it uh, to a certain extent not majorly but to a certain extent academic pressure can also impact a girl to commit suicide whereby she feels that uh, disappointing the family expectations is uh, something which is uncalled for because like you know her education is not something which is individualistic her education is symbolic for education of all the girls in her region in her extended family if she is an elder one okay uh, in her village okay in her vicinity so she becomes a symbolic we can say baron of ed education okay bastion of education so when she is the bastion of education and she is unable to cope up with the pressures of education there can be a possibility that she may contemplate suicide okay there can be cultural factors also related to family honor or or shame which can also encourage the woman to commit suicide that's what we all can consider after mentioning all of it then you can discuss about the given uh, like you know conclusion related to this uh, question whereby you can talk about we, what we need so a brief overview related to the component of suggestions that's what is like uh, like uh, encourage to all of you that just give a brief insight related to suggestions and that's how you can uh, like uh, wrap up the answer you can just like i would say bring a contextual understanding or logic to the answer all right further ahead when we are moving uh, with this given dimension we can reflect upon the next question that is child cuddling is now being replaced by mobile discuss its impact on socialization of children now what happens is that when students see uh, such kind of we can uh, consider whenever students like see this kind of dimension we can understand that uh, students have a sense of understanding while seeing uh, these questions that oh it is so generalized in nature upsc has this tendency like you know for more than a decade now i remember there was a question in 2010 which was related to changing patterns of uh, nutrition for children uh, due to globalization so many people thought oh it's about pizza burger so you cannot generalize it like that there's a way to decode such questions which look too simplistic and generalized in nature but they have to like you know segmented into certain brackets so first and foremost you can see this is saying child cuddling is now being replaced by mobile phones many people would superficially decode it that child cuddling is now being replaced by mobile phones they can say oh child cuddling can be replaced by children also when they are resorting to online uh, like watching games like you know uh, animations etc and uh, child like cuddling can be replaced by adults also people may decode it both ways please pay attention to the language child cuddling is now being replaced by mobile phones now being replaced the question is by whom who will be replacing it by whom so cuddling is done by whom okay the mother or the parent right so is now being replaced by mobile phones okay so by whom for whom when you raise these kind of questions and discuss its impact on socialization of children okay so you can see there are layers to this question as well so first is who is replacing child cuddling with mobile phone and why so why are adults not cuddling the child enough is it due to fun is it due to like uh, being lazy or easy with the child or is it also associated with some necessity because that's the profound way you are supposed to analyze a question you are not supposed to like uh, engage with a question when you are discussing uh, a given question from one sided opinion 
okay so it will be very superficial to say that oh parents have become so laid back parents are no more good at parenting they have done away with traditional ways of hugging and cuddling a child i mean that will be a very superficial take to it the thing is why is mobile phone a necessity and then talking about why child cuddling is important and when it is missing then what is like what are the segments which will get affected then what will be the short term impl implication and what will be the long term implication both okay so that's how you are supposed to segmentalize it okay like let us reflect upon the answer what i have created for all of you so as all of you can see first and foremost parents especially mothers like many individuals may use phone for various reasons this is a balanced way to write okay may use the phones for various reasons there can be various reasons so communication with family and friends which is also equally important and essential for information for support maybe for child rearing practices only for handling the baby well what kind of nutritional supplement should be given to the child multiple reasons you may use a phone because it is the easiest and fastest source of information okay again we can see work and productivity especially for mothers or parents who are working from home right it can be related to social media entertainment right shopping and errands because there are times when mothers are ordering a lot of things online a lot of support system getting created from online okay a lot of social media channels talking about how to like uh, you know take care of the baby or youtube channels instructing you with respect to how to handle the nappy or how to give the massage and so many other things which traditionally was taken care of by the extended family the neighborhood the child did not belong to the isolated or the nuclear family only the child belonged to the entire neighborhood not only the joint joint family so think about it okay coping mechanisms to deal with stress or feeling of isolation so there can be mothers or parents who are in a distress situation and for the sake of entertainment or for the sake of we can say meaningful positive distraction we can see that once in a while just to cheer themselves up they might be resorting to social media because social media can cheer you up instantly with certain posts certain kind of witty uh, like we can say sources right so that's also something which we all can connect with now further let us understand this given dimension so it's important for parents and caregivers to strike a balance between using these digital devices for various purposes while spending quality time with younger ones as their wholesome personality development takes place at this stage and one of the profound ways to connect with a child is through cuddling as it has tremendous impact on the emotional and psychological well being of the child right so here let us see what kind of impact cuddling creates just the keywords i'll be showing you can read the details later so you can see there is an emotional bonding that gets created through cuddling because there is a sense of well being in ethics paper we talk about contact comfort studies okay here i'm just helping you to recall that so in contact comfort studies it was observed even amongst monkeys that the monkeys who were not orphaned who were taken care of by their mothers those monkeys when they like uh, like grew up they had better personalities they could maintain a better balance with the opposite uh, gender they were able to maintain leadership roles in their own group they were able to share better communicate better okay whereas those monkeys who were orphaned were either too quarrelsome or too timid and like uh, detached from the community from the group okay so uh, that was contact comfort studies the same results were again like you know observed amongst orphan children it was observed that children who were uh, like you know hugged and cuddled by their mothers exercised better personalities they could handle like you know emotional distress better they were able to communicate their uh, discomfort better they were able to in future when they grew up they had better relation with their partners they were able to communicate better with the society so contact comfort studies can also be recalled okay but because of 150 word limitation i just picked up the insights of contact comfort studies and i just am bringing it over here so we can see this uh, uh, so because of like hugging or cuddling what do we see there is like uh, 
stress reduction that takes place because there is oxytocin that like is uh, released. We can see emotional regulation can take place because a child learns how to regulate one's emotion. Okay? Um, there is a very soothing kind of dimension, soothing uh, possibility which takes place when uh, a child is suffering a distress situation. A child tends to feel secure. Okay. Again, we can see there is brain development. It has been proved scientifically, especially for infants, that hugging and cuddling also encourages better like a brain development because growth related hormones are released. Okay. Again, communication because when parents are cuddling a child, they will talk also. And when they are frequently talking to the child, language formation, like sentence formation, grammatical understanding, right? And emotional articulation of one's emotion takes place, okay? Through communication. So, on, and all that happens when we are continuously in the process of, we can consider, um, continuously in the process of, we can say, uh, cuddling a child, okay? So, all these key points further, when we move ahead, we can see, there is this social skills that you can generate in a child with respect to understanding the physical boundaries, what ought to be like we can consider exercised at all times and what ought not to be like reflected upon, right. Again, further we can talk about, um, right, so with respect to this parent and child traded in digital, how can we mold empathetic human if we replace nurturing touch with screens, yes, that's there. Um, no, this language can be used, but uh, more over in essay, okay. Uh, this can be still, it is acceptable if you are using it in introduction or conclusion for that matter, okay. So, uh, you can just towards the big like end, what probably I like thought of incorporating is in the long run when this absence of this cuddling is there, then what in what ways it can impact a child. So, there will be a limited perspective of the child as the child grows up because when you are having a sense of security and comfort, you are open to embrace diversity. You, When you are not feeling secure, you will be resistance to difference, resistance to diversity because you will see it as a threat. You know, when you are psychologically feeling comfortable, warm, the sense of being held, the sense of belongingness, okay that also broadens your perspective as a grown-up, okay. Reflect what I said. This is a very deep sentence which I said. Now, so it can also encourage lack of empathy because if diversity is missing, it is due to lack of empathy. Social skills can be also experiencing like deficit in social skills. Further, we can see value formation and identity development that's also something which can be reflected. So, value formation and identity development can be compromised. We can further see mental health impact can also be observed, right? Whereby a child is experiencing that loneliness, anxiety, depression. Um, when you are cuddling a child and then you are talking a lot and generally what do we talk to a child other than games, plays, pulling the leg? We also talk about a lot of do's and don'ts. And through those do's and don'ts, we like, you know, we uh, communicate a lot of values to a child. A child who is experiencing insecurity at a younger age, uh, like I can give you this example from ISIS. ISIS, what you know, how it behaves with children, it will pick the child at a younger age, preferably less than five years of age, like, like separate a child from the mother. And then they will like, you know, regiment a child about, we can say, uh, the, the, the possibility of sensitization. How will they, they regiment the child? So, sometimes it has been observed, they give a child a pet. The child will be raising a pet. And as the child is gaining a sense of connect with the pet, one day they will just take uh, the pet and kill the pet in front of the child. The child has a lot of anger, a lot of resistance, a lot of hatred. And then they will repeat this phenomenon by and by with other children in the surroundings and they will keep giving pet again this, again this. Over the time period, a sense of emotional detachment, anger, resistance is what is bred in the child, okay. And because of which it is, it becomes very easy for them to inject radicalized ideas that what we say is right. Any kind of empathy, sensitization, which like or, or sensitivity which is emerging from within you 
it is not a right choice because like your emotional your emotions are are not guided correctly it is we who will say when you should become emotional and when you should not which issues you should be passionate about which you should not so that's what when warmth is missing when the cuddle of the mother is missing when sense of security is missing it can and and insecurity is prevailing all that can also lead to like risk the possibility of radicalization so radicals will always prefer that a child who's not had a very comfortable childhood who has not been uh, like loved or protected enough they will try to hide, handle or identify such a child per se okay then further when we are speaking of it we can also reflect upon um certain other sub segments that is related to delayed language development i told you if you are not talking regularly to the child this will happen attention issues behavioral issues when the child is like you know not getting enough attention cuddling then you will see the child will become more agitated angry attention seeker uh, will try to throw a tantrum like you know relationship regulation behavior management all that can go topsy turvy again inconsistent discipline sometimes the child is like being all nice sometimes the child is becoming too uh, rude or arrogant all those possibilities there can be sleep disturbances because if you are using a lot of mobile phone and your child is also exposed to that screen space okay then in that situation the mother as well as the child both or the parent as well as the child both may experience this disturbance in the sleep cycle again there can be reduced attention and interaction that's also something which we can see so however it's important to note that impact of cuddling can vary from child to child that's also an important angle to be opened in the conclusion not every child needs too much of hugging and not every child is comfortable hugging children have a tendency like you know when they are really secure then few children will have a tendency to to be very assertive and the moment you try to hug the child like, no 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 just take me down i want to walk i want to play i want to run i want to do things myself yes that child is quite secure that's why now the child is trying to seek his or her space so it's not necessary you always cuddle the child okay you need to respect the personality of the child because different children will need different levels of cuddling different levels of being supported okay so you need to respect that cuddling is generally beneficial okay but it should be in a way that it is respecting a child's comfort and autonomy okay and uh, we need to understand that children may naturally need more physical affection okay but still at the same time many may also respect their independence and may seek independence so the key is to establish what a nurturing and response caregiving environment okay what is this cuddling cuddling is associated with this this is the core essence of cuddling that's the key issue and with which i would like to end the answer that the key is to establish what a nurturing because by cuddling we wanted to create what a nurturing and a responsible okay so responsive caregiving environment that meets the unique needs of each child okay i hope all of you are able to understand this answer as well then we move to this one how did the colonial rule affect the tribals in india and what was the tribal response to colonial oppression now with respect to this question i believe all the sociology students old as well as new a new i mean uh, the present batch yet needs to study this chapter but this is the notes which is related to tribals in india and in this notes as i believe all of you can see there is this colonial policy and tribes that's something which is an integral part of this syllabus in sociology those students who don't have sociology optional see uh, the moment they see the this kind of question see this specific question how did the colonial rule affect the tribals in india and what was the tribal response to the colonial oppression right you can see this two aspects of the question two parts of the question in this given segment um when we are reflecting upon the answer related to it what is expected from all of you because see uh, like history because it looks like a history oriented question and it is beyond doubt it is the thing is in history classes you don't get an exclusive lecture on tribals tribals uh, rather is taught very exhaustively 
in the component of we can say Indian society. So whether you are dealing with Indian society, the notes, the material or you are dealing with suppose you have studied social issues from some other teacher somewhere else, no problem. You reach out to your sociology optional friends and tell them that give me the brief notes related to tribals in India. I need that material. I know that it's helpful. In that you will find various subsegments associated with tribals. One of the subsegment is associated with colonial rule. And I believe that majority of the subsegments are raised in GS. If you want to have an overview, what are the sub dimensions which are there in the syllabus? of social sociology and how it is connected to GS, there is this brief, brief dimension. Definitional problems, this area definitional problems has been asked so many number of times. I mean, if I say at least three times directly, once indirectly, like so three times directly this question being asked, definitional problems, the problem to identify tribes, why tribals are referred as ST. I am talking about GS, not sociology optional. In GS, Thrice questions have been asked related to the component of definitional problem. The geographical spread has not been asked even once. Okay, The component of marginalization of tribals post-independence has again been being asked. So tribals as oppressed or marginal community, issues of integration and autonomy, yes, this has been asked twice. And when we are talking about colonial policy and tribals, this has been asked this time, 2023, for the first time this area which was associated with history but it is a part of sociology syllabus it was asked directly why who is making the question paper a university professor and the university professor who is making the question paper for sociology optional is the same person who is making the question for Indian society proposing a list of questions to the like uh, we can say the chief invigilator and the chief invigilator is picking questions from all the we can say suggestions sources all academicians giving their questions blending them and then presenting a wholesome question paper for the civil services aspirants. So you can see it's directly in sociology syllabus and thus you can lift the content from here. So I'll directly take you to this colonial policy and tribals and then we will start with the discussion. So in this, when the question is asking two parts, how did colonial rule affect the tribals? And then what is their response to that impact? What colonial oppression was doing to them? So you can directly see what, a, like when we are talking about it, you can do away with the, like, you know, this, uh, who is speaking what. So in GS, you don't need to talk about this. What is GS Guria saying? What is Veriar Elvin saying? It's not that if you write, marks will be deducted. No, not really. Is it something exclusive to sociology option? No, not really, because these statements can be found even in basic NCRT, okay? Whereby, because Veriar Elvin was a part of Nehru's team as well, okay? Before independence, in 1920s, he had discussed the approach to empower the tribals to the British because the British had invited him. Post-independence, uh, Jawaharlal Nehru invited him that uh, you have stayed with tribals uh, because he was, he initially came for evangelical purposes for few years and then after three or four years only, he underwent a change in his, I would say, intellect and in his heart and he did not want to continue with evangelical purposes and he wanted to stay with tribals, do studies on them, write books and research papers related to it. So, Varya Elvin, he also got married initially to a Gond woman, um, underwent a divorce within a time span of seven or eight years and then again second marriage was also related to another tribal woman from Odisha. Okay. So, uh, Varya Elvin, it was considered he has a very good and thorough understanding of tribals in India with non-participatory observation. Okay. So, maintaining that sense of neutrality despite being a part of the community and that's why his research work and his writings are highly honored and that's why you have him over here. So, when we are reflecting upon uh, like uh, where are Elvin or G.S. Gurie, you can just discuss uh, their insight also if you want to. But anyway, when we are speaking of it, you can start straight away from here also. That in 1880, uh, 1855, various committees and policies were made in which Lord Dalhousie announced the first forest policy in which timber was declared as the property of the state and its cutting was a criminal offense. So, of course, like all the tribals who are associated with minor forest produce uh, or we can say the wood 
the non timber forest produce all of them will be segmentalized they will be segregated and they will not be allowed to use those resources further right so what do we see we all can see that gradually with the establishment of british rule we can see there is the phase of invasion and appropriation this is a technical term used by one of the thinkers but you can see here also i have not mentioned the thinker later later in the sociology notes i have mentioned his name uh, in this material only but in gs you don't need to mention the name of thinker at all you just need to talk about how this invasion and appropriation was carried forward by the british points have been enlisted which all of you can see it is through railways and roadways uh, by which new system of administration came into existence which challenged the tribal way of life the tribal methods of regulation and administration you can talk about political autonomy of tribals it was like lost we can also see there was plunder of natural resources there is displacement and confrontation with tribals because of which we all can see that tribal autonomy was contested and a lot of we can say tribal protest took place in different parts of uh, we can say india then the britishers they declared forest when we we are able to see that they declare, declared forest as a natural national asset and when they are declaring it as a national asset we can see that uh, it is something which is going to regulate the forest products and produce further we can see in tribal regions like uh, the tri the land was never owned like uh, privately we could see there was jhum cultivation or shifting cultivation so tribals they always had a community ownership to the land and that's something which can be connected in this given scenario okay that uh, you know, that given possibility of like you know tribals holding the land tribals taking care of the given a uh, land is something which can be associated with uh, the dimension of uh, uh, like we can say british challenging that 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 authority and uh, they like like removing the tribals from that specific land and that leading to that uh, uh, we can say unrest because of the displacement so because you can talk about the institution of private property was introduced by the british comprador class which is the zamindars okay you can talk about these zamindars how they collaborated with the british to further go ahead with exploitation of land again you can talk about uh, ownership rights they were vested in these traditional elites that is the zamindars and we can further see that tribal counties were created which were very attractive for people from outside and they considered that if we move to the tribal regions it will be like very lucrative for all of us to we can consider monetize the situation to profiteer from the given situation further we all can see that uh, there is uh, land hunger is increasing so like you know they started cheaping like selling cheap liquor and all that to the tribals to confiscate the land that's why very are elvin said when the britishers asked that what should be done to contain tribal unrest is there is a massive tribal unrest between you can see uh, like uh, 1889 or 1885 onwards we can say but majorly 1889 to 1906 okay major unrest like in different parts of india right and uh, birsa munda if you can remember tana bhagat so all these like social movements you can simultaneously recall and you can keep like writing all that as an impact that was also happening simultaneously okay so that's why that, that's the reason why the british they started reflecting that what kind of policy is required uh like uh, because of which we can do away with the social unrest that is caused by the tribals okay anyway you can talk about monetization of market economy the so because of mon monetization of market economy private brewing of liquor was considered illegal and tribals were in the habit of like having uh, their own locally brewed like brewed liquor and consuming that regularly because tribals are associated to a certain extent with hedonistic lifestyle what is hedonistic eat drink make merry have a comfortable easy life simple life but like you know a fulfilling life like that fulfilling in terms of uh, we can say physical condition okay not materialistic condition because you're not into hoarding of property but you know like we can say a condition of existence so that's what we all can associate with 
again we can see so liquor drinking an integral part of tribal life and that was something which was no more possible because you could not brew it at home so you get into the possibility of we can say uh, like borrowing money to purchase liquor and that will lead to indebtedness there's failure of rain drought famine all these natural calamities that will further add to the misery you will again go to money lenders for the money and that will further increase the misery there is land alienation which has led to millions of tribals getting isolated especially from bengal chota nagpur region of uh, jharkhand bengal parts of uh, like northern odisha you can also see uh, santhals santhals from west bengal were uh, like uh, we can see picked from uh, the santhal pargana and also from jharkhand and they were sent to assam in the tea estates so there was also like this location that took place so marginalization and pauperization and loss of tribal autonomy these are some core impacts when we reflect upon it so santhal rebellion was a mark of this disenchantment when we talk about it okay uh, so when we are talking about this we can also see british they did not study the customs the practices the lifestyle of tribals and then they drafted a policy because of which uh like you know they said that if you have the land record you shall be like uh, given the right of ownership if you don't have land record then you cannot use the land and tribals traditionally were into shifting cultivation so they were dissociated from the land and that is something which you all can recall will also lead to the friction per se again bd sharma he reports how the forest officials they used to interpret laws in a very ridiculous manner and because of which we can see the tribals were further marginalized and that also led to an unsympathetic attitude of the forest officer so all this it led to like tribal unrest and friction so we can see when they lost their control which is also referred as jad jungal zameen jad means your roots jungle means the forest and zameen means the land which they were like cultivating as a consolidated community so all those possibilities could be visible in this given situation right and because of which we can see the economic resources of their li livelihood was getting compromised all right further we can see they became a part of the larger political unit and hence they lost their political autonomy and uh, like they started they started resisting this given possibility other issues you can see is uh, related to we can say multiple types of uh we can say cultural aggression um also impact of we can say conversion so all those things were also happening then what is the impact of it that is the second part of it so what is the impact due to it if you if you notice the question so the question asks is what was the tribal response to colonial oppression so in tribal response you can just notice all these different types of revolts okay uh enlist few revolts the important ones okay after that you can also talk about like uh, the tribal response because of all this uh, the uh, revolts and rebellion was also happening uh, certain we can consider tribal communities they preferred to remain in isolation some became a part of the mainstream society with cultural contact and sometimes also because of we can say uh, uh, like conversion okay so conversion cultural contact so uh, assimilation like you know accepting caste names accepting caste identities those were also the responses other than the revolts and rebellions okay so other than revolts and rebellions when we speak of it you can talk about we can say plus okay along with revolts and rebellions you can talk about uh, assimilation assimilation what happens in assimilation you tend to become similar okay to the mainstream community so assimilation when you accept like we can consider the mainstream occupation so like let's say becoming a part of the caste system okay another response which we can see is like many of them started converting so conversion because of like you know the ease of existence that was offered in the form of jobs or health care or education means basic facilities which in general should have been extended to the tribal community by the state because it was not being extended and for a comfortable living 
uh, and a new ideology or thought process was introduced in the form of religion and simultaneously it was encouraged to go for like let's say conversion so it became we can consider acceptable again further when we are speaking of it we all can connect it with we can say uh, the segment of like the impact of tribals we can say there was also social integration so there was also integration whereby they maintained their identity but at the same time they started catching up with the mainstream uh, customs traditions economic behavior economic association so all that can also be associated over here all right i hope this is making sense to all of you and along with that multiple problems like related uh, to this given phenomena can be enlisted and then suggested that that's the reason why post independence nehru understanding this conflict and this isolation came up with the policy of integration like that you can just cover it up all right so this policy of isolation which britishers came up with that was creating a tribal zoo like possibility and policy of integration which was post independence these were two responses by the government pre independence and post independence that can be briefly enlisted in one sentence because that's not the core demand of the question the question is tri tribal response so first is the effect on tribals and second is tribal response so that's how you are supposed to like move ahead with the question then why did human development fail to keep pace with economic development in india right now human development okay with respect to economic development and then failed to keep pace right why why it failed so first and foremost we need to understand what is human development okay after understanding what is human development we need to tally it with how human development and economic development may not be one and the same may not be one and the same then you have to discuss the reasons reasons of we can consider lack of similarity so reasons of uh, or reasons responsible for the gap so i hope all of you are understanding how questions are decoded because it's very important for all of you to understand how to decode the question and and like you know substantiate the given answer okay so like reasons for the gap right reasons for the gap and that's how you would be like substantiating the answer qualitatively so first and foremost we can see that india when we are speaking of human development it is like uh, associated with this component of human development is associated with segments related to health education standard of living acha with respect to human development are you aware of the three values of human development because we are discussing that why human development failed to keep pace with economic development here the values of human development is not required that's why i'm not discussing it here but in general like you students should know the three values of human development and and in another question if wherever there is a reflection related to human development you can bring in that wisdom golit a thinker had given this concept related to human development which was later on adopted by the world bank in 1960s he said human development can be associated with three segments three parameters first the basic essentials of life what are the basic essentials of life that can be associated with health education now you'll be like, oh this is something which i knew yes definitely you did so health education then a very important segment security yes security so health education security and after security you can talk about other essentials related to sanitation or we can say uh, uh, we can say housing okay and then so that's first thing the basic essentials of life second segment is related to self respect and self esteem okay it's not necessary that if you are getting food shelter clothing self respect and self esteem is protected ask those women 
who have been married or who have been raised by their parents but they are constantly victims of abuse just because of their gender identity so just because they are getting food or shelter or clothing it does not mean their self respect and identity is preserved okay so uh, there can be women who are working you'll be like oh if a woman is economically independent she'll be fine no 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 there can be a possibility a woman can be economically independent but uh, like uh, her salary is getting controlled by her husband or her parent or her brother okay anyone so in that situation also we can see this possibility can be compromised so when we are talking about values of human development first is basic needs and necessities in life second can be associated with self respect and self esteem and third can be associated with choice okay freedom of choice when you are exposed to a lot of choices and your skill development is multifaceted and then you can choose what you want to become what you want to do that is something associated with the component of freedom of choice all right i hope all of you are able to understand this given sub segment right again when we are further reflecting upon this given a dimension we all can like uh, reflect upon these uh, segments challenges of human development how this challenges of human development is happening then connected to the segment of economy right so here when we are like uh, reflecting upon the sub dimension first and foremost you can think of income inequality income inequality that is inequality in wages and that's too tremendous in india i mean like uh, the the lesser i speak the better it is so we all can see that individuals we can see that they are struggling with this given possibility sanskritization well well do you want to fit in the idea of sanskritization wasam if you are thinking that you will talk about sanskritization of tribals well 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 that will be an improper usage because if you actually sociologically get into the segment of sanskritization sanskritization took place of middle rung castes not lower rung communities whether it was related to the dalits it was related to the untouchables it was associated with tribal groups if you like im like imply to say that tribals I, i'm sorry to the rest of the students because i told you i'll be taking doubts also in between so if you imply to say that sanskritization of tribals took place well well not really it was not sanskritization per se i had mentioned this term that tribals took up caste identities okay tribals had taken up not not here just a second not here i had mentioned it over here the tribals had taken up caste identities okay so when i said they took up the caste identities it is different from sanskritization because taking up caste identity majority of the tribals were provided with a lower caste identity not a higher caste identity you think of dhokra kamar you think of pentia bhoi you think of gaddi lohar you can think of like uh, uh, the the hira potters you can see the kind of caste groups they get associated with there has been in ancient times there has been a mention of uh, we can uh, consider santhal raj gond raj but are they consolidated into the component of kshatriya community think so the idea of sanskritization uh, like uh, vasav ayush from wherever you are taking that up let me share this with you that the idea of uh, like uh, sanskritization pertaining to like tribals cannot be really associated it cannot really be associated the term will not fall uh, like in the correct place with respect to majority of the tribals even those communities which came close to caste groups and adopted or they accepted caste based identities sanskritization is not the right term any thorough academician who understands the term sanskritization will uh, not use the term okay will say that yes caste based identities were accepted by tribals but that's not what is sanskritization per se okay uh now with respect to it um and that too if i am talking about it from amen srinivas's concept associated with sanskritization okay sanskritization is like when a community it emulates or it like copies the we can say cultural identity or the cultural behavior of upper caste communities like vegetarianism like taking bath twice a day like 
like chanting or uh, like uh, reading scriptures, right? Uh, like uh, getting into like uh, we can say uh, those forms of day-to-day -day life activities which are considered as sacred, right? Or pure. Now the thing is, um, you know about Sanskritization. There is a clause that when you are copying a upper caste community and generally Brahmins, because initially there was a term. Brahminization used instead of Sanskritization, okay, which was later on by Srinivas only removed. It was replaced. Brahminization was replaced with Sanskritization. But we can see that the term, when we are talking about Sanskritization, um, it was it was associated with acceptance of the community, the dominant community and the upper caste community of the region. Then only a community would be considered as Sanskritized. Like we can see. Yes, do you, do you people know our students of the old students, do you remember the uh, community which was associated with it? Vishwakarma Brahmins, remember? So Vishwakarma Brahmins, they aspired to be recognized as Brahmins, but the larger community did not accept them as Brahmins. So they failed to be recognized as Brahmins. So, Sanskritization is not complete till the time the other communities also accept you as an upper caste group. Okay? That is why Vasav having a thorough understanding is very essential. You cannot just use terms like casually and it applies to us also, we teachers. We also should refrain from using sociological terms casually. Okay? We have to be very clear about first the in-depth understanding of the word, the meaning of it and then the correct usage of it. If we are throwing those words casually, that can be problematic, especially greater responsibility when you are teaching GS. First, how much like uh, the word should be exercised, how far the language can be exercised one and second, uh, if you are exercising that language, how it should not overwhelm a child, how it should be in a balanced precision uh, when we are speaking of it. I hope you are getting an idea of it uh, because it is general studies. So, okay, I will look into this. Vikash, thank you for the suggestion. All right, um, political mismanagement, a failure of investment in education, health can hinder the development. Yes, 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 very good. That can be considered, all those points. Now, so uh, with respect to this given area, the next question that we had started with, okay. So the question that why human development fail to keep pace with economic development in India. So I first like shared the approach with all of you, how to decode the question in like, you know, uh, in an open mode and how we can incorporate the segments per se. So here, as we are reflecting upon this uh, given uh, dimension, first and foremost, you need to explain very briefly what is human development. And then what is economic development and how human development may not, may not lead to or may not be associated with economic development. A society can get economically developed but not developed from the perspective of human development. Okay. So, and why, what are the reasons responsible for the gap? Actual focus should be on the reasons responsible for the gap. So, briefly speaking, when we speak of human development, it is related to three core components, health, education, standard of living. Then you are supposed to reflect from the these key points. I mean, I think this is effortless thinking. So, income inequality, one more thing with respect to you students. What happens is when we see these points, you are like, yeah, 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 I know it. When it comes to reflecting and writing, the biggest gap which I have seen related to these points is, Knowing the point is very different from being able to create it. So what probably I can advise all of you is how about you memorizing the list of points. I mean seeing the point and knowing it is different. You will be like yeah, yeah I am understanding but if I ask you to reproduce maybe you can write four or five dimensions. How many of you can exactly produce each and every single dimension? Think about it. You will be skipping few. Reflect which one. Okay, reflect which one and then understand that uh, memorizing a structure is always helpful. There is no shortcut to it. So try to memorize structures of answers. The moment you get a question, cut. You are recalling the structure and you are writing. That increases speed. That increases memory. Okay, now so this economic inequality that everyone is understanding like 
uh, that is associated with wages and why the or salary why would this difference will be there because you don't have quality education so you don't have sufficient skills when you don't have sufficient skills then you can be unemployed underemployed or even if you are employed you are getting poor salary because of poor skills then it can lead to health related disparities health related disparities can be preventive as well as curative so preventive like for example you don't have sufficient sufficient access to nutrition food security uh, preventive you don't have access to a sanitized environment to stay access to clean water okay and curative you are falling ill but you don't have access to medicines again gender inequality so we can say uh, inequality pertaining to identity can also be another problem then we can see child labor can be an issue associated with the same environmental degradation poor people they leave they live in unhealthy environments they fall ill and as they fall ill we all can see that uh, the given possibility of they falling ill uh, impacts the very dimension of their performance at work participation at work so that's also something which we all can connect with further when we are discussing about this uh, given dimension we can also connect it with like let's say the component of uh, like population growth so poor people they will uh, we have uh, like discussed that in the gs class with many of you uh, those who have not attended it's okay the point of theory of wealth model poor people will have a tendency to produce more children so that more uh, supportive hands earning hands at a very young age or at a very early stage a child may switch to like a different employment opportunities you can see like the boys who start selling vegetables or uh, the children who start selling momos or like golgappa or pani puri chaat whatever you call okay you can see they are sometimes so young right 15 years 16 years i sometimes get surprised and then i have also seen these children within 2 3 years getting married why because they had some money they could get a room on rent or they could purchase a little room Uh, because they were like saving and then they get married so child marriage or early marriage and when early marriage will take place then fecundity rate will increase right the time period of being fertile because if you are getting married at 30 you will produce maybe one or two children you are getting married at 35 you may have one child or no child you are getting married at 25 you may have two children on a high side also three you did not plan three it happened as such so the the longer the time period you have to produce children the higher the possibility to uh, like go for more number of children and when there is poverty there will be early marriage early marriage will lead to more number of children and it's not just early marriage more number of children also supporting hands so theory of wealth model that can be connected again urbanization the challenges pertaining to urbanization so all the slums ghettos informal sector bring in all the points okay urban rural divide whereby uh, like development is urban centric most of the times distress migration takes place so you can bring in all that unequal access to technology T technology is the new oil data is the new oil and the community which is devoid of it is the one which will end up suffering okay so you can talk about this and then you can talk about addressing these challenges requires a multi pronged approach involving government policies social initiatives community involvement now before this ye to maine conclusion ka para dala theek hai so before this given component associated with conclusion before this you should talk about how much is being spent okay so talk about the possibility after this the next para should be related to how economic development has articulated okay economic development the reasons responsible for it okay the reasons the factors the players very briefly discuss about them the reasons the factors the players responsible for economic development in india connected to to post industrial economy or the post industrial society which is related to skilled professionals the economic development is associated with the it sector the service sector which is associated with the skilled population of india and when the economic development is happening from that sector so like to give a boost to economic development 
the money is pumped more over in the urban areas and more over the metropolitan areas so lack of decentralized development okay lack of decentralized development talk about budgetary allocation okay the budgetary allocation budgetary allocation related to human development policies how much budgetary allocation is there on education on health care on skill development on employment generation on planned urbanization decentralized understanding of urbanization all the above problems man all these points which we are seeing talk about all these points and how much is being spent on them okay so budgetary allocation on human development policies okay then you can talk about like we can say uh, policy evaluation policy evaluation in policy evaluation key points of gaps and challenges gaps and challenges which are related to these segments these areas all right and after the gaps and challenges discussed related to the policy evaluation then you can further move ahead and then you can talk about hence okay hence okay we can see that there is economic development okay but not human resource development and after that then in the conclusion give the possibility of what needs to be done in the conclusion provide suggestions that's how you are able to complete this given answer so address these challenges uh, addressing these challenges requires multi pronged approach involving government policies social initiatives okay budgetary allocation community involvement okay so budgetary allocation is investment so investment in education healthcare infrastructure social safety nets so all of it you can incorporate i hope that's making sense and everyone can understand what is the core demand of the question and how to decode it okay then the next sub component let me take something like challenging and charging and then let us like reflect upon the other given possibilities pertaining to it okay so with respect to this uh, given uh, dimension we can further move ahead and we can like reflect upon the given uh, dimension just a second hold on yeah it's gone it's there we will just take that yes please thank you so uh, when we are talking about this we all can further uh, consolidate give me just just 5 seconds no problem apne bacche ko issue nahi aap aaram se use nikal lijiye aisa kariye ga isko wahi par wahan maine charger rakha hai ayyo ye kya hua acha theek hai wo le lijiye मैं उसमें भूल गई थी फोन चार्ज करना तो एक सेट ऑफ कमेंट्स मिस कर जाएंगे बगल वाले में डाल दे भैया जरूरी उसी में कबड्डी करना बस ठीक है नाउ सो वी वुड बी हेडिंग टू द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन नाउ आई विल टेक अप क्वेश्चन नंबर 18 एंड 19 सून सी दिस 20th क्वेश्चन आई वाज क्वाइट अमेज्ड बाय दिस 20th क्वेश्चन एंड आई वाज लाइक आई विल जस्ट शेयर लाइक the critical understanding of it wait this one see this one discuss the impact of post liberal economy on ethnic identity and communalism see though i have proposed the answer in the content but i want to draw a flow chart and help at least the gs students and the ex optional students like recall that what could have been the answer related to it okay so in this given dimension as we are going to like uh, reflect upon the given answer and as we would be substantiating the answer uh, i would be drawing a diagram and explaining the same now what i have already furnished let me share that with you so impact of post liberal economy what is this in other words its impact of globalization all those who have done gs have told you multiple times whenever i have taught you the chapter of globalization that whenever you discuss the chapter of globalization not only reflect because the topic is impact of globalization on indian society okay so impact of globalization on indian society can be like a economic impact political impact social cultural impact environmental impact then i said it can be impact of globalization on different communities 
like aged population already asked women already asked similarly ethnic communities right and then i also shared connect the chapter of globalization with other topics how globalization can trigger impoverishment like poverty chapter of poverty how globalization will impact patterns of urbanization how globalization will uh, impact caste identity similarly how globalization may encourage communalism and or secularism remember all those who have done that those who have not get exposed these things are taken up in the class these approaches potential areas from where questions can come they are discussed in the class and that's how you progress further ahead so some content i have given so that you have some food for thought later once the lecture is over and you can like you know reflect upon the content and develop the content accordingly meanwhile with respect to this given area when we are discussing about it there is something that uh, that can be drawn so first what has been created let us see so we can see there are some key points which can be associated with the component of its impact on ethnic identity so ethnic identity economic growth when it is happening so economic growth will impact lifestyle aspirations values of the people and hence it will impact the ethnic identity for sure it is going to impact the ethnic and cultural backgrounds of the people for sure further we can see with urbanization and mobility what will happen people will like you know they will migrate they will move to different regions as you are migrating you are getting exposed to you are getting exposed to different customs traditions right and as we are like uh, reflecting upon the same we all can like uh, see a lot of possibilities unfold here as well so what do we see we all can see that when people are traveling it is something which is like getting associated with we can say urban multicultural environments from the traditional uh, we can say environments that people were exposed to if they were living in a monocultural society a society which was not diverse it was associated with the dominance or presence of one ethnic community only suddenly they become multicultural okay so from monocultural to multicultural those possibilities can also emerge because of globalization that's something which we all can connect with right again along with this we all can also reflect upon um, a certain other like we can say uh, changing dynamics or changing possibilities that is cultural exchange will take place because liberalization will facilitate cultural exchange like for example if any of you is like let's say getting into the possibility of understanding that how ethnic communities are getting in touch with uh, global community you can see that like for example people since childhood were like remembering i don't know your generation because your and my generation is parted with two decades two decades apart so it's like a tremendous impact but when we were children i should talk about myself at my like generation we were taught g and then h and i so like you know g for whatever goat or something like that h for hat i was for igloo okay i for igloo and the thing is when you grow up and when you start understanding ethnicities and culture and communities it is then that you understand that the term uh, associated with igloo is uh, and and the tribals living in an igloo is not a positive term it's not a healthy term it is only when you are exposed to this multiculturalism you realize that uh, it's not a balanced term you should always use inuit communities inuit okay i n u i t inuit communities how did you come to know about it because when you, due to globalization due to liberal economy you got exposed to different cultures so the person belonging to that community while giving an interview she said that well it is disrespectful when someone calls us communities belonging to igloos arctic regions we would prefer to be referred as inuit communities okay when you read the books the research work the literature you realize that it should be referred as inuit communities that's what so when we talk about this given possibility of cultural exchange we can understand that that is giving us giving those we can say ethnic communities which did not have their voice which did not have their identities registered that will get 
like we can say emanated that will like come to the forefront people will be able to witness that they will be able to see that okay and get associated so exposure to different cultures as well as you can enrich your identity by this diversity at the same time there can be a challenge to ethnic identity there can be a fear of loss a fear of a loss with respect to cultural aggression like for example the asura community of we can say pockets of jharkhand and uh, west bengal because of this cultural aggression because when the asura community young boys and girls if they use their like uh, title asur there's a fair ch challenge that like you know the younger generation which is relatively hostile may mock oh asur rakshas daitya okay demon like that without understanding that the component of sur and asur was not associated with gods and demons sur was referred in many contexts to aryans and asur was ref referred to non aryans that is indigenous or the tribal population so when we are talking about these given possibilities we can like you know substantiate uh, the given idea related to uh, what we understand the with respect to the impact of globalization on ethnic identity okay so ethnic identities can be under threat and ethnic identities can also get hyphenated right let's move ahead further and we can see this so cultural preservation cultural preservation we can see on the other hand economic liberalization will also make efforts to preserve and promote ethnic and cultural identity so many dedicated websites youtube channels encouraging you with respect to what kind of dress food like you know music literature oral tradition written tradition right the sculpture architecture related to that ethnic community has existed and thus preservation protection propagation becomes easier because of liberalization liberal economy now you must be understanding this positive and negative both kind of impact related to ethnic identity and mind it this is the first part of the answer okay first part of the answer you have and 250 words that's why i'm like taking the liberty of explaining them as well identity politics assertion politics will take place why because in a democracy which whereby people are not we can say um, you know people are not consolidated together we all can um, consider this uh, okay all right vikash i got your concern i will look into that concern thank you so when we are talking about this given dimension uh, with that's uh, paper 2 okay that's paper 2 social justice we are discussing paper 1 so i'm not bringing in the insights of uh, paper uh, like 2 uh, right now i'm just focusing on paper 1 and the question that we are in the process of discussing that is associated with uh, discuss the impact of post liberal economy on ethnic identity first part and then we'll discuss the communism part okay now so when we are talking about this identity politics why identity politics will get hyphenated in the era of globalization now this identity politics can qualify as a separate question in itself okay globalization and identity politics one full fledged question can be asked and you can prepare it for future so whether the identity politics is pertaining to caste gender race religion all will get hyphenated because in democracy when we can consider intellect is not prevailing when insecurity and friction is prevailing when diversity is not wholeheartedly accepted in such a situation the insecurity can encourage mind it and remember that the insecurity can encourage the given possibility of we can say communities playing the number game contesting elections as if fighting with numbers and when we can say the merit of a candidate is not on the basis of the agenda the person is fighting for okay the we can say the promising character of the uh, we can say the person who's contesting the election rather than that what is really given importance is associated with we can consider the person's um, identity and moreover the person's identity with respect to uh, ascribed status that is caste gender religion region 
in that situation we all can see this phenomena unfold and that is what so that is the person being able to gain vote on the name of the person's identity matching the community which is voting for them and this is emerging because of insecurity that probably in the number game if my if the person of my community is not like uh, elected in that situation my interests can be hampered can be compromised so that kind of possibility can also be understood or reflected upon okay now further when we are under understanding this given dimension of like let's say identity politics we can further substantiate it and we can see what possibilities can like unfold here we all can like uh, understand under the component of identity politics we can understand that uh, ethnic and regional groups will find that there is this uh, assertion of one's rights and like the community politics and the candidates elected accordingly okay we can see consumerism can also impact the ethnic identity like for example the patterns of uh, like food dress uh, language that you are using all that can get affected cultural products all that can get affected i mean a lot of people will do away with their ethnic identity in terms of language they will do away with their we can say folk ways they will do away with we can say folk tradition culture right and they will start accepting a language the language of the market so if the language of the market is pro english it will be pro english it will be pro some other vernacular language they'll go for that language in the process somewhere identity and ethnicity will get compromised so consumerism also shapes the consumption choices the cultural products clothing food all of it again okay? media and entertainment can also impact we can consider it can also impact by reinforcing we can say challenges and traditional ethnic stereotypes and also narratives so glorifying a specific thought process glorifying a way of existence so all that can be connected then further we can think of this education and employment okay and in terms of education and employment when we are reflecting upon it we can see that this dimension of education and employment can be connected with like we can consider different ethnic backgrounds and when we are talking about different ethnic backgrounds people are like exposed to different levels of education and employment this will lead to discrimination okay discrimination bias divide class divide all that will also be a by product of liberal economy social integration may also experience both it can like expose a person to diversity and encourage the possibility of integration but at the same time those ethnic identities which will not be able to cope up with change those identities which will not be able to we can say ad adjust and adapt to change those communities will undergo this specific rigor of we can say loss of culture and hence they may have a sense of resistance hostility towards liberalization or towards liberal economy all that can also be considered you can also see i have discussed this in terms of positive impact like how when we are talking about the possibility of uh, like uh, the component of ethnic identity with respect to how it is getting hyphenated so positive as well as negative impact now this component of communalism let me explain this dimension again communalism i will encourage you write more on negative side less on positive side okay what is communalism communalism is coming from the root word community in the name of your community when you regiment and you consider that your community is better than the rest this community identity can be based on language religion region whatever okay so when you consider that your community is better than the rest this identity this insight related to we can say um, one's community is referred as communalism narrowly speaking it is connected to religious communalism a person who is regimented in the lines of one's religion is considered as like communal but truth is if you go by the broader understanding of it globally any regimentation in the lines of one's own community 
will be referred as communalism. So, caste based identity, ethnic identity, religious identity, regional identity, all of it will qualify under the canopy or the umbrella of communalism. Okay, But when we use the term communalism, generally it is associated with, we can consider the religious identity. Right, uh, But um, it is encouraged to all of you that um, you will, when you will be discussing about it, just briefly in one sentence explain this and then go ahead with the given possibility. So, a lot of communities will get identity assertion. So, very briefly you can talk about it, but focus more on the negative aspect. Now, why like the impact segment with respect to communalism, I will take it differently because I will again show you the question and accordingly draw the diagram this time. So, the question as you can see it is written, discuss the impact of post liberal economy on communalism. Okay. So, the impact on communalism. Okay. So, how the impact is impact like uh, the, the post liberal economy is impacting communalism, how it is affecting communalism. So, with respect to this probably we can take up a brief diagram okay, which can help you understand. So, when you are talking about LPG economy, okay, so like let us say LPG economy, okay, and uh, when we are like let us say discussing about it, let me see where is it coming, okay, yes, so like let us say there is LPG economy. So, in liberalization, privatization, globalization, so liberalized, privatized, globalized economy, when we are moving further ahead, let us reflect upon the kind of change that it can articulate. So, with all these like uh, possibilities, first and foremost, you will be talking about how it will lead to a new social order, new social order with respect to we can say economic changes. We can consider cultural social changes. After cultural social changes, then you can reflect it with respect to we can say like political changes. Okay. And then discuss how these changes are sudden plus tremendous. Tremendous. Then after discussing that how these so, uh, like changes are sudden and tremendous then discuss how the like norms have yet not established themselves. So, there is we can consider the society is undergoing tr transition. So, transitional society. A transitional society is constantly trying to like you know negotiate, negotiate its own space with respect to uh, what ought to be followed, what ought not to be followed. So, in transitional society when there is a sudden and tremendous change, it will lead to normlessness. When there is normlessness, it will lead to an emotion of like let us say alienation, alienation or anomy. You can use either of the terms, alienation, anomy and more importantly plus insecurity alienation, anomy and insecurity. Okay. Because of this what will happen when we speak of it? So, because of this given possibility I hope all of you can see this. Okay. So, because of this we, you will be talking about a specific organization. Okay. An organization or a body will come into existence or I can it is not necessary I just draw it like this. I can probably keep pulling the thread underneath. Okay. So, just a second. Yes. So, what you will see is because of this when we are talking about it. So, there is alienation and anomy. Here then we all can see there is the role of an organization which will come into existence. So, just a second. So, there is a role of an organization. An organization which will reassert, reassert the identity. Okay, reassert identity plus extend protection, extend protection, okay, promise better future, promise better future, promise better future and it can also encourage revivalism, 
revivalism. So, in this situation, an organization, this organization can be any organization. It can be a political organization, it can be a religious organization, it can be like working as a voluntary organization, it can be working as an NGO, it can be working as any of it, okay, an educational organization, it can be a social media organization, any, any, okay, any of it. Now, when it is encouraging the possibility of like let's say change this organization is uh, like uh, so because of this what will happen this alienated uh, individual who's feeling insecure who's experiencing anomaly okay this individual will suddenly get a sense of we can consider belongingness right and then because of that what will happen so we will see that this individual will start like integrating so the alienated alienated uh, ethnic or alienated ethnic group gets a new sense of integration new sense of integration and identity when it gets a new sense of integration and identity because of which what do we see so we all can see with a new sense of integration and identity uh, we can see over the time period over the time period it leads to over integration over integration and this over integration will lead to ripen into ethnocentrism this ethnocentrism, now I hope majority of you are able to recall the diagram. And this ethnocentrism will further ripen into fundamentalism. And this fundamentalism will lead to communal violence. Communal violence. Right? So liberal economy, this is the regressive aspect associated with it. In what ways has globalization, new liberal economic policies contributed to communal tensions in India and what strategies can be implemented to promote greater social harmony and cohesion? Yes, so first part of it has been already responded and then the second part of it can be associated with the suggestions which can boost social integration. All right, so that's how you can handle this given question. All right. Now, further, when we are speaking of it, we all can uh, like uh, reflect. Uh, where is the question? <laughs> so, just a second, just a second. Yeah. So, I hope all of you are able to understand this. So, when you get this question, like the impact of post-liberal economy on ethnic identity. So, ethnic identity impact can be positive as well as negative. Both. Okay. But when we are talking about this component of negative connected with communalism, okay. And communalism, how? So, I have drawn the diagram. That is how you are supposed to create the answer. I hope all of you are getting an idea and you are able to like consolidate the given sub-segments, right. Then comes the next sub-part that is why is caste identity in India both fluid as well as static? Why? So, if you reflect upon the question why and then fluid and then static. So, I think uh, sociology optional students will be quite comfortable and confident associated with this given answer, right. You must be feeling that ah, this is like literally picking up all the given sub-segments associated with what I have studied so far and like it just needs to be incorporated here and we can probably use the given dimensions accordingly, right. So, and that is probably the reason why like um, I would say we tried to create this given uh, segment. So, uh, with respect to it, when we are talking about the dimension of caste being a fluid identity and caste being a static identity. So, fluid identity means caste system undergoing change, okay. And it is not saying how it is undergoing change, the question is why it is undergoing change, mind the word why. And then the, the component is like why it is static, if it is static when we are talking about it. So, why is it static? If it is static, 
and uh, like uh, the the we can say the factors which would be promoting the given possibilities of it being static okay so that's what you will have to incorporate related to this given dimension so when we are like uh, substantiating the given insights associated with it let us further substantiate the points so all of you i hope can recall the like all of you if not majority of you i should say so majority of you i hope you can recall that why this uh, component of caste system is existing right and then i hope all of you can uh, recall that the given sub segment that uh, uh, why it is getting like undergoing a specific dimension of change so i'm just reading all the comments that different students are writing from different platforms simultaneously to consolidate the given dimension so with respect to continuity when we are talking about it static static i think majority of you can connect so when we are talking about the sub segment of caste system being static okay so with respect to this we all can uh, like consider that there there is this possibility of caste system being static and then we can connect it with fluid 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 this side i'll write the points and static this side i'll write okay so when we are talking about caste system being static we can connect it with religion right when we are talking about religion so somewhere the society when it is deeply religious and caste system is endorsed by the religious practices traditions different types of customs functions which are specific to different caste groups who are supposed to perform those rituals and traditions and those identities in our private affairs still continue caste will continue to exist okay then after religious reasons then you can also talk about the patterns of endogamy which is still practiced endogamy means marrying within one's own community that will also lead to caste based identity getting hyphenated okay just the key points i'm giving you okay then you can also talk about the social traditions and cultural beliefs so traditional and cultural beliefs traditional and cultural beliefs you can talk about the traditional and cultural beliefs as well after traditional and cultural beliefs you can also talk about the possibility of social stigma and discrimination to my surprise i when i was interacting with bhubaneswar students and also rajasthan students okay so students from odisha and rajasthan as well as few pockets of madhya pradesh did accept that in different remote areas there are still temples where the schedule caste community or the dalit community are not allowed entry imagine 75 years of independence and still a community is like a victim of social stigma and discrimination competent rights cultural rights are not extended and then we lament oh my god how come a person belonging to this community went for conversion i mean distressful situations may encourage such possibilities we can also see there can be political and economic interests so political and economic interests which can also hyphenate we can say caste identity encourage the caste identity to prevail okay to exist we can also see the enforcing laws may not be profound okay so we can say lack of sufficient enforcement right so lack of sufficient enforcement lack of sufficient enforcement okay so lack of sufficient enforcement talk about the affirmative action the implementation of discriminatory laws how it is not taking place at all times then you can talk about social isolation social isolation related to various customs traditions you can talk about uh, like you know uh, sometimes communities can be settled in segregated colonies and uh, like you know they are not allowed to be a part of some mainstream colony okay in some rural area or township area okay whereby it is dedicated to a specific community so that social isolation whereby discriminatory patterns of residence and existence okay also delimits the given possibility again the patterns of inheritance in caste so inheritance inheritance of caste identity 
or we can say inheritance of caste with respect to like uh, the, the caste status being passed. So, you are socializing the child into that thought process. So, inheritance of caste connected with socialization of a child. Okay. After inheritance of the caste, you can further talk about the possibility of resistance of change. A lot of communities, they have this resistance of change. So, if Marx would have been there, he would have said that anyone who is a have and who is benefiting out of the situation, why would the person like uh, exercise social reform or accept any kind of reform. The person is benefiting from the situation, so the person will aspire that let it exist, let that pattern of we can say dimension exist, right. Now with respect to this, we can also talk about the given possibility of like let's say uh, how caste system is undergoing change because it is like it's a fluid identity. So, with respect to fluid identity, we all can reflect upon a lot of dimensions. First and foremost, we can talk about urbanization and uh, urbanization, modernization, modernization. And along with urbanization and modernization, you can talk about the fluidity occurring because of the principles of urbanization and modernization uh, whereby an individual is exposed to like let's say a rational thought process so connected with rationality after that you can also talk about modern education so we can say modern education right connected with the poss possibilities related to modern education connected with inter caste marriages, inter-caste, inter-community marriages. After that, you can also talk about like social movements, so social reforms, movements, right. After that, you can also talk about legal protections, okay. So legal, I don't know what fell, from my end nothing fell, oh here. Here something has fallen. And from where? Gira kaha se? Achha, okay. No problem. So, we can consider uh, the component of, res no, no, here. So, social reforms and then after that I was discussing about legal. Yeah. So, legal we can say amendments. So, legal amendments, you can talk about it. Again, legal amendments, protections, and then we can next talk about the given possibility of political representation. Political representation. Under the component of political representation, you can also add the sub-segment of reservation. So, the fluidity shall happen whereby more and more like communities will feel like being a part of this okay and after this then you can talk about in the conclusion you can talk about the possibility that despite these so called changes caste based discrimination and violence continues to exist and shape the identity of a modern individual okay so talk about caste discrimination and violence caste discrimination violence and what steps are needed plus the steps needed to do away with it. Okay, very briefly. That is how you can discuss both the segments. That is fluidity and static. Because question is why. Why is the identity fluid and then why is the identity static? No, like 10 points this side, 7, 8 points this side, you will be able to like substantiate the answer. I hope all of you are able to understand that. That brings us to the last question. Okay, the last question which was associated with this one, you can see I tried to make it as exhaustive as possible and I understand that like there is so much that has to be further created. Okay, now with respect to this, does urbanization lead to more segregation and or marginalization of the poor in Indian metropolises? Okay, so when we are reflecting upon... Uh, this given dimension associated with uh, more segregation, 
how has communism emerged as a challenge to india's pluralistic and secular ethos and how can we address um well i hope you have understood this given dimension how it has emerged as a challenge to pluralistic and secular ethos it has because communalism will like encourage identity politics segregation hatred insecurity and all this will somewhere impact the given possibility of uh, acceptance of diversity diversity uh, is emerging in the space and scope where there is security where there is sense of tolerance where there is acceptance where there is harmonization of interest where there is embracing plurality okay so we can see that um, somewhere pluralism and secularism uh, ill will get like uh, affected due to communalism and then second aspect which you are saying that uh, how can we address it effectively well it can be addressed quite effectively if you remember the suggestions first and foremost we can talk about promoting modern laws any law which promotes equality and diversity which safeguards equality and diversity because equality and diversity in one aspect of life in one walk of life shall promote modernity equality and diversity in other walks of life it cannot be possible that a person is talking about like you know gender equality but talking about religious discrimination a person who believes in discrimination will believe in discrimination of other patterns also we'll talk about primarily religious discrimination but will also accept caste based discrimination and then gender based discrimination so it's not possible that a person is exercising discrimination only from one perspective that's what you all can understand okay another like we can say suggestion as you are asking that what can be like other ways in which we can address without compromising on diversity and democracy you can promote education cultural exchange if i quote professor dipankar gupta he said that uh, a lot of insecurity a lot of divide a lot of doubt and mistrust it emer it it remains because communities are unable to trust each other communities are unable to uh, like you know be with each other and the reason is lack of regular interaction if there is absence of interaction between communities friction can exist so we need to understand how to improve interaction between communities that is through regular programs regular exchange uh, programs cultural programs social programs whereby communities are coming together and interacting dipankar gupta said that if communalism is a social movement it should be countered sorry dipankar gupta is it bipin chandra professor bipin chandra he said if communalism is a social movement let us counter it with another social movement which is based on plurality and diversity other methods you can talk about is like a police reforms whereby sensitization in the face of communalism whenever communal violence happens there is human rights violation so how about like uh, addressing the human rights violation by we can say in time addressal of uh, like first aid in time addressal of safety and security to women children okay you know, we can say uh, like uh, addressing issues in the long run pertaining to poverty discrimination hate speech okay we can also see uh, intervention can come with respect to quick and time bound addressal of such cases okay so judicial intervention in a time bound manner so that faith and trust in judiciary is intact it can be associated with effective disaster management whereby uh, like you know whenever there is a communal violence time bound addressal of human rights and effective support is created we can also think of uh, investigation agencies the role of investigation agencies that whenever they are tipped with any information that there is a communal violence that is being designed or articulated they are able to address that issue okay they are able to make a difference with respect to that issue so that's how you can like uh, probably consolidate all these given some segments that's what i can say all right so uh now moving ahead to the last question as i was suggesting this given dimension related to it so with respect to this uh, when we are talking about urbanization greater segregation and marginalization of poor in indian metropolises you know there are two parts of this question 
first is urbanization leading to segregation and then second part of the question is urbanization leading to marginalization and that is how i have prepared the material for all of you to reflect and read okay so factors that have contributed to segregation and how that segregation is taking place okay so first a basic understanding with respect to what is urbanization but how there are various factors which has led to this uh, uh, urbanization which leads to segregation so we can consider this segregation where housing cost is expensive so not every community is able to afford good quality housing similarly limited access to services uh, can be associated with this segregation so dividing the communities in terms of the quality of education healthcare sanitation facilities which are provided employment opportunities which are provided social discrimination can also lead to the segregation if we reflect upon the given points right again we can see land use policies so you can create zones zones of segregation like for example i remember in delhi uh, near the civil lines area there were zones of segregation whereby slums are existing near uh, majnu gatila or near the tibetan colony and where like you know the civil lines posh area rajpur road and all the the areas are isolated so they so that they don't experience the rigor of crime and the frictions associated with uh, the communities trespassing their areas okay there are gated societies housing colonies you can think of all that also there can be transportation barriers so poor transportation for the lower income groups like you can see like uh, buses which are in a dilapidated condition okay whereas for the relatively middle income groups you can have better infrastructure and for rich you can have other sets of we can say infrastructure which is uh, facilitating their ease of movement okay then further you can see the given possibility pertaining to implications of segregation what impact it can generate very briefly very briefly because the question is not on impact of segregation mind the question always memorize the question does urbanization lead to more segregation you will be talking yes and why what are the reasons okay what will be the impact preferably write it in one sentence i have given the points with elaboration but just mention one sentence comma 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 key points okay so what are the points all of you can see it over here so you can see it can be it can lead to if i were you i would have written that this social segregation or the segregation related to urbanization uh, further leads to social inequality comma health disparities comma educational gaps because then elaboration will be a repetition of it right okay lack of social cohesion comma and challenges pertaining to urban development full stop that's it okay and after this then you can further like uh, here i have given very briefly some suggestion that how do to do away with this segregation so let us have a holistic approach to the idea of development which is like associated with affordable housing improving access to basic services promoting inclusive urban planning then systemic discrimination should be addressed all these segments and then talk about the given possibility of marginalization how urbanization can lead to marginalization marginalization means you are thrown to the corner you are marginalized you are thrown to the corner many people will think segregation marginalization is one and, and the same thing uh, segregation is separating prying you and making you different marginalization after differentiating you are pushed to the core okay so that's an extreme version okay so then you can talk about limited employment opportunities with respect to housing and land cost it will soar up so high that you won't be able to afford it any decent housing that will not be there again this marginalization can be associated with inadequate services the informal economy and this informal economy will lack job security there will be irregular income okay there will be lack of social protection all these key points you can reflect then further you can see this land displacement social discrimination will be at a high level okay we can see limited mobility of the community because marginalized that's what so when they are marginalized they will not be able to uh, easily move from one area to another it is this uh, community which also suffered during covid if you remember because getting back to their homes became a challenge 
people who are well off could afford flights and could move back by following the norms and protocols but it is those who could not afford a railway ticket or were overburdened it is they who were crushed under the we can say wheels of the train we could see these, these were the people who were dying on the roads these were the people who were unable to like you know cope up to their homes or even after reaching their homes they died due to fatigue or due to malnourishment so all that you can recall limited mobility this marginalization will push you to the possibility of like you know struggling even for survival again lack of political representation will make you voiceless so you won't be able to raise your voice for your rights and needs okay and then a brief suggestion related to how you can address the issue of marginalization how you can create the dimension related to marginalization okay so this is what you are supposed to deal with in terms of this question paper as promised i'll take a lecture on it this is the lecture and i hope it was uh, relatively satisfactory for all of you whereby all the important points were brought to context and i hope now the paper is now seemingly easy it's seemingly doable and you must be realizing that remembering structures of core points related to important topics is essential when you remember structures capability to reproduce is higher all right so thank you all of you for your patience if there are any other uh, questions i will be there for another few minutes and i will be taking up your questions if needed so just let me know if there are any questions associated with this given area i'll just check all the we can say groups once again it seems everything is good everyone is so silent in the other two groups okay all right either you are understanding everything or you are like in a like a state of ease and comfort trance or not connected Huh, whatever it is all right so all good all of you so shall i call off the session so thank you for being a part of this session and uh, all those students who would be attending this session later feel free to write your comments i would be reading each one of them thank you take care have a great day ahead